The purpose of this presentation is to provide some basic knowledge on how a microwave interacts with and thus heats various materials and to discuss why chemists use this tool to prepare samples for elemental analysis. When analyzing a sample for metals, one typically uses an ICP or ICP-MS. Regardless, the spectrometer needs a homogeneous aqueous solution in order to aspirate the liquid into the spectrometer. For this reason, we must digest the sample using acid to destroy the matrix leaving the analytes in solution. Pressurized digestion allows one to heat acids above the boiling point. This increases the oxidation potential of certain acids, like nitric, as well as increasing the solubility of the solution. Think of how hot water will dissolve more than cold water. The digestion process also goes much faster and provides a more complete digestion compared to hot blocks. The use of a microwave to provide the energy allows for the instantaneous heating of the liquids as compared to conventional heating. Microwave energy is applied at full power instantly. Microwave energy can be modulated much better than conventional conductive heat, so it produces a more uniform heating of the sample. As illustrated in this diagram, microwave energy has many advantages versus conductive heat. Microwaves are transparent to materials such as Pyrex, glass, and Teflon. Therefore, it passes right through and into the sample. Conductive heating requires each surface to be heated, and then the heat is transferred to the next. It is not efficient. Here we see a beaker of liquid being heated on a hot plate. The plate must heat the surface of the container, which then heats the next layer, then the next. Finally, the heat reaches the liquid layer in direct contact with the glass. This liquid is heated, which in turn transfers heat to the next layer. Because the center of the liquid is cooler than the liquid touching the glass, thermal currents are generated. This mixing of the liquid aids in the heating. This method of heating, known as conduction, requires a great deal of time. When the desired endpoint is reached, the chemist must remove the beaker from the heating plate to stop the reaction. Simply turning off the heating plate is not sufficient. To further understand how microwaves heat materials, let's look at the electromagnetic spectrum and specifically where microwaves are located on it. You will notice that microwaves are located in the low energy spectrum area to the right between IR and radio waves. It is a region that provides for molecular rotation interaction. As compared to other forms of radiation, microwave is not very energetic. In fact, the quantum energy of a microwave is far less than the bond energy required to break a simple hydrogen bond. The blue table shows the energy contained in various sources of electromagnetic radiation. The red table shows different bond types and the energy needed to break those bonds. Microwaves produce only 1 times 10 to the negative fifth electron volts, not even enough energy to break a hydrogen bond in water. Microwaves will not and cannot destroy molecules. So, how do microwaves interact with molecules and break bonds? The answer is twofold. The primary mechanism is dipole rotation, while the secondary process is ionic conductance. As dipole rotation is by far the main source of heating, we will focus on this first. We can illustrate dipole rotation using a water molecule and a sine wave, which illustrates the positive and negative side of the electromagnetic field. We show the water molecule at three points in time. At time zero, the water molecule is aligned with the field in that the negative electron of oxygen is aligned. However, just one-tenth of a nanosecond later, the field, which is moving at the speed of light, has shifted and the molecule is not aligned, so it will rotate to attempt to realign itself. But the field keeps rapidly moving, causing the molecule to rotate back and forth continuously. In a liquid state, molecules are packed rather tightly together, and so this rotation causes them to bump into each other. This causes friction, which causes rapid heating. There are many ways to predict if a molecule can be heated by microwave energy. The easiest is to look at the dipole moment. The stronger the dipole, the more easily it will be heated in a microwave field. In our table, you can see that all mineral acids have a dipole moment above 1.0. Nitric acid is a superabsorber at above 2.0. The second heating mechanism is ionic conductance. Positively or negatively charged ions will be distorted by the electromagnetic field, which causes them to move towards the positive or negative side of the field. This is known as the electrophoretic effect. 
When microwaves come into contact with materials, they can behave in different ways. We classify materials into three general categories. Conductor materials are metallic materials that reflect microwave energy and do not heat. Think of the metal walls of a microwave oven. Dielectric materials will interact and absorb microwave energy. You do not want to have these materials present in the cavity as either part of the vessel or turntable, for example. The materials can change the microwave pattern and therefore create hot and cold spots in the microwave cavity, which will lead to uneven heating. Insulators are materials that are transparent to microwave energy, but then hold the heat generated by the collision energy. Teflon, glass, and quartz are good insulators, which is why they are the primary materials used in our digestion vessels. Microwave digestion vessels should be insulators. Teflon is a preferred material because it allows the microwave energy to pass through, but does not absorb the energy. This focuses all of the microwave energy on the sample, yielding faster and more controlled digestions. Teflon vessels require a sleeve for mechanical strength. This sleeve is also an insulator, however less so than Teflon, which allows the vessel and sample to cool more rapidly. Due to the selective heating of microwave energy, dynamic disequilibrium can occur within a digestion vessel. These microwaves selectively heat the liquid sample, which boils into vapor and then gas phases. The microwaves are inefficient at heating the gaseous phases, allowing them to cool within the vessel. This dynamic heating and cooling allows microwave digestion reactions to occur at higher temperatures, yet lower pressures than conventional heating. When acids are heated in a microwave, they begin to break bonds, as shown in this diagram. The first reaction represents an organic reaction in which lots of carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide gases are released. Vessels must be able to handle the production of these gases. The second and third reactions represent different types of inorganic reactions which produce much less gas. Organic-based samples, those which contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, are typically digested in nitric acid alone at temperatures between 175 and 200 degrees C. Since nitric acid is heated well above the boiling point, you can eliminate other oxidizing acids such as perchloric and hydrogen peroxide. The main concern is for an exothermic reaction which generates a lot of gas quickly. Sample size and the right method will help prevent this. Inorganic samples are more complex and will require different acid mixtures in order to provide a completely digested sample. Some inorganic materials will require temperatures as high as 300 degrees C in order to get a total digest. Inorganic digestion is more complicated than organic digestion. Fortunately, we have developed method notes to cover a vast majority of these applications. Anytime you are heating acids or solvents, whether by microwave or conventional heating, safety measures should be put in place to handle potential threats due to exposure of heat to such solutions. While microwave digestion provides a complete, rapid, and safe means of sample preparation for most samples, not all samples are suitable for digestion in a microwave. The compounds noted here can cause fires, explosions, or other catastrophic events and are not recommended for use with microwave digestion equipment. In conclusion, it can be said that microwave digestion is a proven technique to significantly speed up and provide a more complete digestion for trace metals analysis. A more complete digestion helps reduce interferences in the analyzer. Organic and inorganic samples heat very differently, so they cannot be digested in the same batch. For more information on sample preparation of organic and inorganic samples, visit our website at cem.com forward slash acid digestion.